Police tonight are looking into the discovery of a male body this afternoon. Before we go any further, we want to tell you just to be warned that there is some gruesome pictures that we're about to show you. Now, reports are that around 1230 this afternoon, a black male clad in a diving suit was pulled from waters off Fort Montague by a swimmer just about 15 feet from the shore. An investigation is ongoing. So far, no ID on the victim. After hitting a number of snags, the Crown finally called its first witness today in the Kofi Goodman murder trial. Goodman is accused of killing 11-year-old Marco Archer back in September of 2011. The trial was expected to open Friday, but it was delayed after Justice Bernard Turner excused a juror after she revealed that her mother had ties to a relative of 11-year-old Archer. And during today's proceedings, the court also dismissed an application by Goodman's attorney, Jeffrey Farkasen, calling for the remaining jurors to be discharged. Meantime, in his opening statements, Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions Garvin Gaskins noted that the Crown is relying on DNA evidence to prove its case and will connect the dots forensically. A deadline has been placed on the presentation of that highly anticipated NIB audit report. Minister with Responsibility for National Insurance Shane Gibson told ZNS News he intends to present that report on the National Insurance Board at the next sitting of the House of Assembly. Minister Gibson has said the Attorney General's office had been reviewing the very thorough report but previewed that he was expecting to receive the green light to reveal its contents this past weekend. The audit came after allegations surfaced involving former National Insurance Board Chairman and MP for Marco City, Greg Moss, and now suspended Director Algernon Cargill. The accounting firm Grant Thornton was engaged last November to conduct the audit after allegations were made by Moss against Cargill and later Cargill against Moss. The Bahamas Union of Teachers has made its request known to the government as its old industrial agreement nears expiration. Presenting a draft of its industrial agreement for the 2013-2016 to the government this morning, the union is requesting, among other things, that the government cover members' medical insurance 100%, that members are granted a 12% increase over three years, a new salary scale be implemented, and that entry-level salaries be increased to $29,700. BU2 President Belinda Wilson presented the draft to Education Minister Jerome Fitzgerald today. The current contract expires in two months. The the BUT right now represents 4,000 teachers. Um, we hope that some of the articles that we have agreed in this agreement, as you would have said earlier, is going to propel education and it gives us also an opportunity for us to work together in harmony, in consultation and collaboration to make sure that our children and that's what all of us are here for, to make sure that the children of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas gets the best out of the educational system that they can. As for fringe benefits, the union is proposing laptop computers for all members, concessions of custom duties and crown land for BUT housing subdivisions throughout the country. Education Minister Jerome Fitzgerald says he looks forward to working with the union to hash out a new agreement. He added that the Ministry of Labor will oversee the negotiations for not only his ministry, but all government ministries. To ensure that um, we work together so that you're able to achieve the objectives that the union set out and myself within the ministry and department be able to achieve our objectives as well. And once we work together, it'll make it um, that much um, easier for both of us and the beneficiaries of that, of course, would be our students and the teachers. So um, I look forward to it and I look forward to reading through the draft and us sitting down and um, agreeing on certain things, some of which you and I have already discussed, um, which I look forward to some major breakthroughs as far as how uh, the union and the um, Ministry of Education um, cooperate moving forward. The union hopes to begin negotiations by May of this year. A handful of food vendors at Arawak Key and the Potters Key Dock failed to pay their arrears with the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources and are now in the process of having their stalls reassigned to other business persons on the waiting list. Now, Arla Zonde was sat down with the Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources, V. Alfred Gray, to discuss the arrears issue and to get an update on the government's plans to transform Potters Key. My view is, if you can't pay the whole rent, show me that you're willing to pay something. Mm -hmm. And we could talk. 
Agriculture and Marine Resources Minister V. Alfred Gray says he is satisfied that some food vendors with arrears are keeping up with their monthly payments despite these tough economic times. And while he has been a bit lenient, Gray says those who refuse to pay up will continue to be dealt with. I have just recently um, approved the taking back of one or two stalls at Potter's Key because um, of non-payment. And I've approved the reassignment of those stalls to people who were on a list waiting. Arawaki has not presented that situation for us to make that decision. Even though three food vendors are in the process of being reassigned, thousands of dollars in arrears are still pending. When asked how long he thinks it will take before vendors are fully out of the red, Gray responded this way. The agreement called for vendors at Arawaki to pay $200 per month on their arrears. If you consider that some of the vendors owed up to $40,000, some of those will probably continue perhaps until my grandchildren are men and women because $200 per month is basically $1,200 and $2,400 a year. When you take twenty four into $40,000, you are talking about at least 10 years. But on the bright side, the minister says business for our key vendors is going pretty well and government is looking at making some infrastructural upgrades to give those at Potter's Key a boost in sales. I have just approved five contracts for the redevelopment of Potter's Key. And so in the next three to six weeks, you would see a new Potter's Key dock emerging. Gray says he is optimistic that those infrastructural upgrades to government buildings will transform Potter's Key into the mecca for outdoor family activities. LaDawn Davis, ZNS Network News. What was hotter than barbecue ribs? Well, the competition, of course, will take you to a fierce grill after the break. Also ahead, a pro tells his first year story. We've got that coming up in sports. You're watching The Bahamas tonight. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jiminita Swain. The Brazil Investment Conference wraps up and the Bahamian delegation has left its mark. The Bahamas Financial Service Board hosted 40 Brazilian fund managers and investors to a Bahamas breakfast briefing. The private forum was a part of the annual BIS conference held last week in Sao Paulo. BFSB CEO and Executive Director Alia Allen said the level of participation in the briefing and the positive feedback received speaks to the headway the country is making in the Brazilian market. The government's real property tax amnesty period will expire at the end of June. The program, which took effect on March 1st, is geared towards encouraging residents to register and pay their real property taxes. It also gives property owners who are current with their bills an automatic 5% rebate between 2013 to 2015 once accounts, accounts are current. It also encourages self-registration by owners of residential and commercial properties who are not on the assessment list to be exempted from taxes prior to 2013 provided they register with the valuation unit. And German financial markets watchdogs Baffin plans to scrutinize German lenders' offshore wealth management business, this as it intensifies its global clampdown on tax evasion. Reuters News is reporting that the bank regulators followed word that Bayern Munich football chief Uli Honis faces a tax evasion investigation involving a Swiss bank account. The Bahamas is among a list of German federal banks' offshore listings. That was your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jiminita Swain.